Sua mãe vai naquela tudo, segura a sua mão! Olá, olá, olá. Uh, well, if you're hearing this, then chances are you've made a very poor career choice. Hello, everybody. Nugget Noir here. Today we're going to be reviewing Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Let's do this. When Five Nights at Freddy's first came out, it was a massive, massive overnight success. It was so popular that it got Let's Hello, Plays, everybody. merchandise, music videos, songs, animations, the works. It's got so much content to it. It was absolutely massive when it first came out, so a sequel was inevitable. None of the fans were aware that a sequel was in the works at the moment. We all thought this was going to be a one-hit wonder and it was going to be a simple, fun little indie game. But eventually, on Scott Cawthon's website, the game creator, by the way, posted this picture. This teaser image of Freddy looking completely different than he does in the first game. And after that, more teasers kept following, until eventually the trailer dropped for the second game. And it turns out, the second game was only going to be released three months after the first one? That's incredible! The fact that Scott Cawthon was able to make a game that fast is really impressive. And it's a good thing too, because when it comes to the first one, there were still a lot of questions that were left unanswered. Who did the bite of 87? Why was Foxy out of order? Who is our main character and why would he stay there for five nights in a row? Well, the sequel will hopefully give us a lot more answers, but it will also give us a lot more questions too. Let's do this, guys. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 actually has a cutscene at the beginning of each night. At the beginning of each night, we see through the eyes of Freddy Fazbear standing on stage in the very first game. Whenever the cutscene changes, new things are added in, like Golden Freddy is there, and also a new character simply known as the Puppet. I'll get to them later, do not worry. Anyways, once we get into the actual game, we're in a whole new location. It turns out Freddy Fazbear's Pizza has reopened. The first location closed down not too long ago because of, well, obvious reasons. So now our classic gang is replaced by a set of whole new characters, while the old animatronics from the first game are stuck in the parts and service room. Let me explain the characters for you this time around. I'm gonna name the characters in order as best I can. Work with me here, guys. So this game has four Freddies. I'm not joking, four bears in this game, holy moly. First of all, we got Toy Freddy. He's the very friendly looking replacement for our classic Freddy Fazbear. Toy Freddy mostly hangs out on stage, but he sometimes visits our office and stares us down. I really like Toy Freddy's design. He's very silly and goofy looking. And I don't know why, but I imagine the streamer Queso's voice fitting with him way too well. People have even made animations off of him. Listen to this. Chat, would you eat me if given the chance? Be honest. I couldn't even start. There's too many calories. It would take 11 months. Fat jokes. That's why I always imagine him sounding like some really frustrated guy working at this job. Anyways, he mostly hangs out on stage, but he comes to visit the office every now and then. What makes Five Nights at Freddy's 2 even more different from the first one is that this time, there's no doors blocking you from the animatronics. So it makes you wonder, what the heck is supposed to protect me this time around? Well, this time, you have a mask. You see, the animatronics this time around have facial recognition systems. They are able to see if you are a good guy or a bad guy. So as long as you put the mask on before they show up in your office, you're good to go. But you can't keep the mask on for too long, so be careful. The second Freddy we're going to take a look at is Withered Freddy. He's basically the classic Freddy Fazbear with a whole new remodel. I love the way he looks, he's just so eerie looking. Especially this picture right here. <sighs> the fact that he's reaching toward the camera at you and he's just towering over you. <sighs> he's scary looking. Next, we have Withered Golden Freddy. That's right, Golden Freddy is making a return this time around. He looks a lot more withered and appears in your office every now and then as a hallucination. Sometimes he even appears in the hallway. And I love his design this time around. He's just so crumpled and scary looking. Like, ugh. He's just got such an eerie presence to him, just like the first one. The fourth and final Freddy in this game is Shadow Freddy. Shadow Freddy is an easter egg, and he will show up completely randomly in the parts and service room. He isn't really a threat much, he just sits there and looks spooky. So, really not much to say about him. Anyways, on to the Bonnies this time around. We got three Bonnies this time around. First, there's Toy Bonnie, the replacement for Classic Bonnie. He's a lot more goofy looking, and I absolutely love the colors on this guy. He's just so cute! He also does the same thing that Freddy does, but this time he crawls through the vents in order to get to you. So make sure you put that mask on whenever he shows up. Next, there's Withered Bonnie. And let me just say, Withered Bonnie has got to be one of my most favorite animatronic designs in this game. I absolutely love it. The missing arm, the clawed hand, the fact that he has no face and stuff. Oh, it's absolutely perfect. And plus, 
And what makes him even more intimidating is the fact that he towers over you whenever he's in your office. He's very scary looking. And I love it. The third Bonnie we're talking about is Shadow Bonnie. He's also not really a threat, he just shows up every now and then like Shadow Freddy. But instead of showing up in parts and service, he appears in your office. So basically just put up your monitor in order to get rid of him. Next we're gonna talk about the Chicas. There's two Chicas this time around. First we got Toy Chica. She's a very cute redesign of the classic Chica. Every now and then when she's making her way to your office, her design completely changes. Whenever she's on stage, she looks all cute and friendly, but when she makes her way to you, her eyes and beak are completely gone, and she's just left with this creepy smile. <laughs> it's creepy. The only downside I have to say about Toy Chica is, well... <coughs> she is such a bad bitch, though. I will fuck the shit out of that robot, man. I'm not even... <laughs> her face is perfectly fine, but it's her... Body shape. I mean, look at this. I'm sorry, why was the- why would a design like this ever be approved for kids? It just really doesn't make any sense. But anyways, she's still a cool character. And then we get to Withered Chica. And let me tell you guys, Withered Chica has got to be one of the most scariest designs in the whole series. I'll show you a prime example of why she scares me so much. This picture right here is a perfect example why she freaks me out. It's those eyes, man. I do not like it one bit. The fact that she's staring you down, she has no hands anymore, her jaw is like completely wide open, it's almost dinosaur looking. <sighs> she freaks me out. But she has a fantastic design overall. Now we get on to the foxies. We got two foxies this time around. The first foxy is Mangle. You probably take a look at Mangle right here and you're like, what the heck happened to her? Why does she look like this? Why is she all torn apart and ripped to shreds and not looking like anybody else? Well, I can explain. You see, the phone guy who talks to us every night explains that Mengle used to be part of the toy animatronics, but kids used to pull her apart whenever she's performing. And the employees got so tired of putting her back together that they just decided to make her a pull apart and put back together attraction in the kid's cove. I feel really bad for Mengle because she's gotta be the worst looking out of everyone in this game. Holy moly, this poor fox. By the way, Whenever Mangle enters your office, this creepy static noise plays. Take a listen. Then we get to Withered Foxy. Withered Foxy is a special case when it comes to the Withers in the group. You see, whenever you use the mask on Foxy, it does not work for him. He will jump scare you every single time. So what you gotta do is use your flashlights to blind him down the hallway. That'll definitely stop him for sure. Wither Foxy has just got an awesome cool design. I love how frightening he looks whenever he stands at the edge of your hallway. He just kind of gives you an adrenaline rush whenever you have to put that mask on. And now we get on to the new characters. There's humanoids this time around. First we got Balloon Boy. Balloon Boy is this little guy who sells balloons to people. He kind of looks like Lord Farquaad a little bit. <laughs> and let me just tell you, Balloon Boy has got to be one of the most hated characters in the entire franchise. I feel so bad for this little guy. And you want to know why he's so hated? If Balloon Boy manages to get inside of your office, he steals your flashlight battery so there's no way to defend yourself against Foxy. And he just sits there and laughs at you. I don't blame people for hating him that much, but the poor little guy doesn't deserve too much hate. Then there's another different variant of Balloon Boy, a character simply known as JJ. She will appear under your desk and just sit there and stare at you. She's not really that important because she's just kind of an easter egg who just pops up every now and then. And you're like, who the heck is this? She doesn't really do much, but it was nice to mention her. And then we get to one of the most important characters in this game, the marionette, also known as the puppet. The puppet sleeps inside of a music box in Pry's corner. Your job is to wind up the music box next to them that's keeping them from waking up. Because if they do wake up, it's instant game over. There is no way to stop the puppet from killing you. So why is the puppet so important, you may ask? Well, it is explained in this new system in the game called mini games. Sometimes if you die and fail the night, sometimes you get a game over screen, of course. But there's also random times where you're taken to this. This is the minigame section, or the death minigames people call them, where you explore four different minigames. The first minigame shows Withered Freddy walking around the FNAF 2 location. You start to explore the place and suddenly you see the puppet. You hear this bizarre and eerie ambience in the background, and you hear this chiptune voice spelling out a word. Save them. You keep following the puppet to see where they lead you to. Eventually the puppet leads you to this one destination, 
where suddenly you get attacked by this mysterious purple man. And then you get a game over. Who is this purple man? Well, the purple man turns out to be the killer. He is the one who killed literally all the kids in the missing kids incident. And we even witnessed some of it happen, actually. One of the other mini games shows Foxy running down from his cove and running to a group of kids to greet them. The first two times it's perfectly normal, but the third time around, the purple guy shows up. And when you arrive to the room of kids, they're not alive anymore. And then you get jump scared by Foxy. The third mini game shows Freddy delivering cake to a group of kids. Everything seems fine and all, but then you begin to notice the poor little kid who's stuck outside. This kid is crying their eyes out. Suddenly, a purple car drives up and the purple man hops out. The kid's eyes widen in fear and they fill with tears. And then the kid is dead. The purple man dries off like nothing happened. And then suddenly you get jump scared by the puppet. My theory is this kid in this minigame is possessing the puppet. And the fourth and most important minigame of the group is the Give Gifts, Give Life minigame. We see the puppet in a room giving presents to kids. Well, suddenly we see the bodies of the five missing children. And the puppet begins to put the animatronic characters' heads on each of the kids, giving them life. We get jump scared by Golden Freddy at the very end. The puppet is incredibly important, because after getting murdered by the purple man, the puppet wasn't going to go down that easily. In order to get revenge on the purple man along with the other kids, the puppet gives lives to the animatronics by putting the kids' souls inside of them in order to wake them up. That's why they're possessed. Holy moly. That's why they're possessed. Man, it's actually really sad, but also heroic of the puppet. Not wanting to let these kids die in vain, the, the puppet gives them a second chance in order to fight back even though the purple guy keeps telling us, you can't. Who knew that words as simple as you can't could be so powerful in this series? And that was basically the gist of Five Nights at Freddy's 2. But we still had a lot of questions. Who was this purple man? Why do the characters from the first game look so different? And another thing? Why is Phone Guy here? This doesn't make any sense. Something I forgot to mention from the very first game. You see, Phone Guy, you know, the guy from the very first game who gave you tips on what to do each night? dies in Five Nights at Freddy's 1. During the night 4 phone call, we can hear Phone Guy sounding very worried and concerned as we hear banging and moaning coming from outside. The animatronics eventually do break in and, well... Yeah, I, I, I always wondered what was in all those empty heads back there. You know. Oh no. We can just assume the worst. And in night five, we're no longer greeted by Phone Guy. We're greeted by this. Gosh, this was very eerie because Phone Guy seemed to be the only friend we had in the very first game. So it makes you wonder, how the heck is Phone Guy back if he died in the first game? Well, there's a big plot twist that comes in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. It turns out this game isn't a sequel. It's a prequel, and it makes you wonder, how is that even possible? Well, look at the date on the check, 1987. That's right, this is the year that the Bite of 87 happened. We don't know exactly who did it this time, but a lot of evidence points to Mangle. Look at her jump scare animation. It's gotta be Mangle this time around, because look, she's biting toward your frontal lobe. The phone guy did say it's amazing the human body could survive without the frontal lobe, so all the evidence points towards her. And another detail that points to the fact that this is a prequel is the Night 6 phone call. Phone Guy calls us back sounding incredibly worried, and this is what he has to say. Hello, hello. Uh, what on earth are you doing there? Didn't you get the memo? Uh, the place is closed down, at least for a while. Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. And that's right, this is the exact same time when the killings actually happened. We were literally right there when it all happened. So yeah, that's pretty creepy to think about. And also, one more thing that I forgot to mention. Phone Guy mentions this place that we've never even heard of before. This restaurant called Fredbear's Family Diner. What the heck is this place? We don't really know that much about it. Well, it turns out Fredbear's Family Diner was the location that appeared right before this one. It was a much smaller location that had six characters in total. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, a character named Fredbear, and another mysterious character that we don't know about yet. Who's this mysterious character? Well, we're gonna find that out in Five Nights at Freddy's 3. So that was Five Nights at Freddy's 2, everyone! This is a great game in the series. It explains a lot more, but also gives us more questions. 
It keeps the mystery going, and it's a lot of fun. This game is absolutely chaotic and fun and great. I highly recommend this one. Thumbs up for me. This game was a fantastic sequel to an already incredible game. Thumbs up for me.